At the moment, my husband and I are constructing our new house. My mom offered us to stay at her house in the meantime. My brother, who is still in college and eight years younger than me, is staying at my mom's since it's a school break. My brother is antisocial, and on regular days, he's always locked up in his room, playing video games, watching movies, etc. He only comes down for mealtimes or when he has somewhere to go. We respect the way he is and also give him time to relax from school stuff. One night, my mom went to an event at work and didn't arrive home until past midnight. During the early hours of the night, it was just us having dinner. My husband, who was not fond of telling scary stories, out of the blue, started telling scary stories to break the ice at the dinner table. It got my brother talking as he had his interest in such things. Take note that my brother has always had a great relationship with my husband since he was in grade school. Later on, as he grew up, he's been in this serious emo phase, but was never entirely disconnected from us. We have adapted to his ongoing, maturing personality. Anytime we do come up with conversations or moments of having fun, it isn't that difficult for him to open up. One of these moments was that night when we started talking about scary stories. The flow of the conversation was really good and continued even as I was washing the dishes. My brother and my husband started spooking themselves out and decided not to leave my side since my mom hasn't returned home. My brother said he's not going to his room yet, upstairs, until my mom arrives. My husband, on the other hand, didn't go to our bedroom yet either, downstairs, despite feeling sleepy, because the conversation wasn't over after all. The conversation continued after dinner as we sat down in the living room. By that time, my husband felt exhausted and had reached his limit of the amount of scary stories he could handle. Yes, he's not your brave kind of guy when it comes to that. He just pulled his phone out and abruptly removed himself from the conversation. I, on the other hand, realized that these were one of the few moments that my brother really stayed talking to us for a long time. Although it might be because of being in a situation we have no control of, stuck waiting for my mom. I thought it's one of those fun camping moments, unlike any other nights. We get to enjoy it by ourselves. So I kept talking to my brother as we were still in the middle of a story, and I constantly tapped my husband to not be rude and stay in the loop of the conversation he left hanging. Later I realized he's not budging. So to not make it awkward, I told my brother, it's okay, we can still talk. Even with one person abandoning the conversation, then, after an hour or two of really enjoying this rare occasion, my husband just started to act disgruntled that we are inconsiderate, and we continued talking without him. He said that he didn't want to talk because he couldn't handle it anymore, and he had nothing left to contribute. I told him that if he informed us politely, we could have gone about it in two ways. One, we stop the conversation or change the topic. Two, I take him to sleep in the bedroom. Yes, by that time, he's scared to go to sleep on his own. And yes, a 30-year-old man like that exists SMH. And then I go back to accompany my brother, who's going to be left in the living room, alone, waiting for my mom. Important note. Most of the stories we talked about were paranormal incidents that happened exactly at our home. My grandpa died in the bedroom that we are staying at. No hauntings related to my grandpa, but even prior to my grandpa's passing, We've seen shadows, apparitions, heard voices, and things have gotten lost mysteriously. Putting all that together, my husband felt even more uncomfortable and regretful at the result of talking about scary stories that he started in the first place, being in our house already having this kind of background. The overall dynamic, as it turns out, was I'm split to cater to two people who were both needing me at the moment, scared out of their wits. One who just wanted to haul butt and get ourselves comfortable. The other was scared to be by himself, so he third-wheeled temporarily. Now, here's my husband's argument. One, it was very late. Enough time has been spent talking. Two, when one partner says they can't participate in an activity with a group, the other half should resign from the activity as well to be with him, her. Three, he's been my husband for many years. How can I have fun talking with my brother without including him? That means, I am inconsiderate of him. I disregard him, ignore him, and alienate him. And here's my argument. One, does he get to dictate when we start and stop talking? Is this something that he gets to control and have a say for everybody? 
too. We're living here with my family for free. The least I can do is to coexist with them. In his way of ruling the home, he does what he wants, when he wants to, and why he wants. Three, and as I said earlier, I never excluded him. I budged him to stay in the conversation. He insisted on not wanting to talk anymore. It's like inviting people to a party, and you were able to get people to have fun at your party, but you've reached a point that you are done having fun. So now you have to burst everyone's bubble because you now want the party to be over. He is such a difficult person to deal with. He said that because of this incident, he wants to sever his ties with my brother. I haven't heard of someone reacting this way. Is it just me or he's completely insane? Now for a few comments before the update. Comment one. He said that when he stops participating in the conversation, we should end the conversation altogether. Ha 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 ha. Are you also supposed to fall asleep at the same time he does and wake up exactly at the same time? Wouldn't it be terrible if you lived even one minute of your life without your husband there to witness? Either your husband is an idiot or a narcissist. Comment two. Your husband sounds selfish, immature, and controlling. You did nothing wrong. He needs a serious attitude adjustment or it's not going to end well. Make sure he knows you won't put up with that going forward. That kind of stuff starts small and will take over your independence and happiness if you let it. Nip it in the bud now. Now for the update. Hey everyone, thanks for reading. So a month has passed since that night and things have been pretty tense around here. My husband and my brother haven't spoken much since the incident. My husband has been avoiding my brother and it's making things awkward for everyone. My mom noticed the tension and asked me what was going on, but I didn't want to get into it with her. She's already stressed with work and doesn't need more drama. One evening, my husband and I were having dinner alone because my brother was out with friends. My husband brought up the incident again, saying he still felt disrespected. I tried to explain my side once more, but he wasn't having it. He said he felt like I chose my brother over him and that it hurt his feelings. I told him that wasn't the case, but he just shook his head and said he needed some space. A few days later, my brother came to me and asked if he had done something wrong. He noticed my husband was avoiding him and wanted to know why. I didn't want to lie to him, so I told him the truth. He was upset and said he didn't mean to cause any problems. He just enjoyed the conversation and didn't realize it would lead to this. I reassured him that it wasn't his fault and that my husband was just being sensitive. As the days went by, my husband started spending more time away from the house. He'd come home late from work and sometimes even stayed out overnight. I knew he was trying to avoid my brother, but it was starting to affect our relationship. We barely talked, and when we did, it was mostly about mundane things like groceries or bills. The connection we once had seemed to be fading. One night, my mom invited us all to a family dinner. She wanted to bring everyone together and try to ease the tension. My husband reluctantly agreed to go, but he was clearly uncomfortable. During dinner, my mom tried to make small talk, but my husband was distant and barely participated. My brother tried to engage him in conversation, but my husband just gave short, curt responses. It was painful to watch. After dinner, my mom pulled me aside and asked what was really going on. I finally broke down and told her everything. She was shocked and said she had no idea things were this bad. She suggested we all sit down and talk it out, but I wasn't sure if my husband would be willing to do that. A few days later, my mom arranged for us all to sit down and talk. My husband was hesitant, but he agreed. We all sat in the living room and my mom started by saying she wanted us to work things out and find a way to move forward. My husband reiterated his feelings of being disrespected and excluded. My brother apologized and said he never meant to cause any issues. I tried to mediate, but it was clear my husband was still holding onto his resentment. As the conversation went on, my husband revealed something that took me by surprise. He said that growing up, he always felt like he was in the shadow of his older brother, who was the favorite child. He said he always felt like he had to compete for attention and approval. This incident with my brother brought up those old feelings of being left out and not being good enough. It was a revelation that made me see things in a different light. I realized that my husband's reaction wasn't just about that night. It was about deeper issues he had been carrying with him for years. I felt a mix of empathy and frustration. I wanted to help him work through these feelings, but I also felt like he was being unfair to my brother and me. In the days that followed, my husband and I had several long conversations about his past and 
how it was affecting our present. He admitted that he needed to work on letting go of those old feelings and not letting them dictate his actions. I told him I was willing to support him, but he needed to be willing to meet me halfway. Meanwhile, my brother decided to give us some space and went back to his college dorm early. He said he didn't want to be the cause of any more tension and hoped things would get better for us. I appreciated his understanding, but it made me sad that he felt he had to leave. With my brother gone, my husband and I had more time to focus on our relationship. We started going to couples therapy to work through our issues. It wasn't easy, but we were making progress. My husband was slowly opening up about his past and learning to let go of the resentment he'd been holding on to for so long. As for my brother, we stayed in touch through texts and calls. He understood that my husband needed time to work through his issues, and he was supportive of our efforts to improve our relationship. I promised him that once things settled down, we would all get together and try to rebuild the bond that had been strained. In the meantime, my mom continued to be a source of support for all of us. She encouraged us to keep working on our issues and reminded us that family is important. Her words helped keep me grounded and focused on the bigger picture. So that's where we are now. It's been a challenging month, but we're slowly finding our way through it. Thanks for reading. Ada for supporting my wife after she left me and then asking her to go to therapy. My wife, who is 33 years old, and I, a 35-year-old male, have been together for seven years. We got married just before infection 19. Despite all the chaos that has happened in the past few years, I have loved waking up next to her every morning. However, our relationship has not been easy. She has severe trauma from both a physically hurtful childhood and her time in the military. This trauma has made it extremely difficult for her to trust, which has put a significant strain on all aspects of our life. I won't go off topic, so I'll stop there. The situation has reached a breaking point in the past few days, and she has asked for a divorce and is moving out today. She claims that she cannot trust me, but it's difficult to define why. A few weeks ago, we were at a dinner for her younger sister's birthday. All her sister could talk about was how she never wants to retire and how she hates her job. Personally, I've stopped listening to her complaints because that's all she does unless she's constantly being praised. My wife and I had recently returned from a business trip where she did exceptionally well. Naturally, I brought this up and praised my wife to her family. However, her sisters seemed annoyed by it. Then her mom jumped in and started talking about how my wife receives numerous awards at work. I counted about 11 awards per week, so, and how her job is so important. A few days later, when I discussed it with my wife, she said that her sisters and mom felt like I was taking all the credit for the business trip. I hadn't even suggested that I was involved, so I was confused but not surprised. The in-laws come from a family with a history of hierarchy. Her parents are divorced, but when they were together, they competed with each other in how they showed love to their children. My wife and I have the same tendency to give more than we should. As a result, her siblings and mother have always treated her as the lowest rung in the family but they still keep her around. One sibling has no contact with both parents. When she became a teacher, they called her dumb for pursuing a useless degree. But when her younger sister became a teacher, they praised her and said, she's going places. They constantly downplay my wife's accomplishments and abilities whenever they get the chance. Now for an update, cut to today, my wife is moving out to her mom's house. As I sit here alone, I've been trying to figure out how my life changed so quickly, and this is the only explanation that makes sense. I am now very concerned about my wife's well-being, but I've always made a point not to control her life. Should I give her space or move on? Now, for a few comments before the update. Comment 1. Your wife is so enmeshed with her family. Who said what and who received what? She functions more like a child with them than an adult. She is not capable of being anyone's wife. You have gotten yourself so meshed in this craziness too. Remember yourself before you met her? How much of your mental real estate was free before this? Who becomes who? Who is what? Who said what? Your wife has no mental real estate left. She is a full-time their daughter and sister and whatnot. You are heading the same direction. Disengage. Let them fight each other. Find a normal woman who is her own person. Your wife isn't. I would have been bored with all that soup years ago. Comment 2. You can't make her stay with you. You can't make her get better. 
You can't make her see a doctor. You can't save her from herself. You can do nothing for her. It is almost irrelevant what has happened. She made her decision and that's it. Now for the update. Hey everyone, a lot has happened since my last post. After my wife moved out to her mom's house, I felt like my world was crumbling. I spent the first couple of days in a daze, trying to make sense of everything. I knew I had to respect her space, but it was hard not to reach out. I decided to focus on work and give her the time she needed. But then, something unexpected happened. My wife called me late one night, her voice shaky and filled with emotion. She said she needed to talk, and we agreed to meet at a nearby park the next day. When we met, she looked exhausted, like she hadn't slept in days. She told me that living with her mom was even more stressful than she had anticipated. Her mom's constant criticism and the toxic family dynamics were taking a toll on her mental health. She admitted that she missed the stability and support she had with me, but she still felt conflicted about our relationship. She said she needed more time to figure things out, and I agreed to give her that space. A few days later, I got a call from my wife's younger sister. She was in tears and sounded desperate. She said their mom had a massive argument with my wife, accusing her of being ungrateful and a failure. My wife had stormed out of the house and hadn't been seen since. I was frantic with worry and immediately started searching for her. I called her friends, checked her favorite spots, and even drove around the city hoping to find her. After hours of searching, I finally found her sitting alone on a bench by the river. She looked so lost and broken. I sat down next to her and we talked for hours. She opened up about her childhood trauma and how it had shaped her inability to trust. She confessed that she felt like a burden to everyone around her and that she didn't know how to break free from the cycle of self-doubt and insecurity. I realized then that our relationship had been suffering, not just because of external factors, but also because of unresolved issues from her past. I knew I had to make a hard choice. I could either continue to give her space and risk losing her forever, or I could step up and be the support she desperately needed. I chose the latter. I suggested that we go to couples therapy together, and to my surprise, she agreed. We found a therapist who specialized in trauma and relationships, and we started attending sessions twice a week. The therapy sessions were intense and emotionally draining, but they also brought us closer together. We began to understand each other's pain and started working on rebuilding trust. During one of the sessions, my wife shared a story from her childhood that I had never heard before. She talked about how her father used to belittle her and make her feel worthless. She recalled a specific incident where he had torn up a drawing she had made, calling it garbage. This memory had haunted her for years and had contributed to her deep-seated feelings of inadequacy. Hearing this broke my heart, but it also made me more determined to help her heal. As we continued therapy, we also started spending more time together outside of the sessions. We went for long walks, cooked meals together, and even took a weekend trip to the mountains. These moments helped us reconnect and reminded us of why we fell in love in the first place. Slowly but surely, we began to rebuild our relationship on a foundation of trust and understanding. One evening while we were having dinner, my wife looked at me with tears in her eyes and said, I don't want a divorce. I want to fight for us. Hearing those words was like a weight being lifted off my shoulders. I knew we still had a long way to go, but I felt hopeful for the first time in weeks. We decided to set some boundaries with her family to protect our mental health. My wife had a difficult conversation with her mom, explaining how her constant criticism was affecting her. It wasn't easy, but it was a necessary step in her healing process. We also agreed to limit our interactions with her family and focus on building a healthier environment for ourselves. As we navigated these changes, I couldn't help but reflect on my own upbringing. My parents had always been supportive and loving, but I realized that I had taken their support for granted. I shared this with my wife, and it led to a deeper conversation about our different backgrounds and how they had shaped our perspectives on life and relationships. This newfound understanding brought us even closer together. In the midst of all this, I also had to confront my own fears and insecurities. I had always prided myself on being strong and dependable, but this experience made me realize that it's okay to be vulnerable and ask for help. I started seeing a therapist on my own to work through my own issues 
and become a better partner for my wife. As we continued to grow and heal, we made a pact to always communicate openly and honestly with each other. We knew that our journey was far from over, but we were committed to facing whatever challenges came our way together. We also started making plans for the future, like taking a trip to Europe and eventually starting a family. Looking back, I can see how this difficult period in our lives has made us stronger as a couple. We've learned to lean on each other and face our fears head on. While we still have our ups and downs, I feel more connected to my wife than ever before. We're not just surviving, we're thriving. Thank you for reading. Ada for confronting my wife about her sketchy Snapchat locations and emotional affairs. Four years ago, I woke up one night and opened Snapchat and saw that my wife was at another man's house. She told me that she was going to be there to watch movies with other coworkers, but it was three in the morning. It was just her and the guy. She says that they fell asleep. I questioned her about this and she said they had just kissed before she left and that was it. She shaved down there as well. She swore on her sister's life that that was all. A few months later, she admitted that he had spent the night at our house while I was away for work. She invited him after they were drinking together with friends. He slept on the couch and she slept in our room. This happened before the incident in the previous paragraph. We went to marriage counseling and tried to work it out and ended up having a child. Fast forward to a month ago, I happened to check Snapchat and see she is in a wooded area five miles south of her work. Later, she calls me and says that she just got out of work and is going to pick our daughter up. I ask her if she really just got off of work. She says yes. Later, she visits me and brings dinner to me while I'm at work. I ask her again if she was really at work, and I tell her what I saw on Snapchat. She says that she turned around in that wooded area and head back to work to get her coffee cup. That sounded weird, so I challenged her. She then said she was meeting friends and knew that I didn't like it when she hung out with people. I said that wasn't true because after she dropped off my dinner, she was going out with work friends to a weekly tournament they are a part of. She then says that she was with someone. She says that this coworker is going through a lot and needed someone to talk to. She says that she vented to him as well and talked to him about our marriage. She told him that I could be controlling and how she gaslit me about what happened four years ago for an entire year. I did not know that she gaslit me for that long. I thought it was only four months. They met in a park, and she got out of her car and got into his. She later told me after I confronted her that she called the guy on the phone crying and told him about it. The lying is driving me crazy. She lied so much about the first guy that I still don't trust her, and I think I was right considering what happened a month ago. Am I making too big a deal about this? Now for an update. My wife has seen the responses and says she understands now. This is not fake just started therapy. Now for a few comments before the update. Comment one, she keeps lying and breaking your trust. She lies when you give her the chance to tell you the truth. She continues to lie after doing multiple choice and having a child with you. Is it definitely your child? Anyway, without trust, you can't have a healthy relationship. She is still on Snapchat, still going places to be alone with men and still lying. I don't think you are in the relationship that you want to be in. Comment two. Dude, really? She is and has been cheating on you. Get a paternity test and sexually transmitted infections panel and an appointment with a divorce lawyer. Now for the update. Hey everyone, a lot has happened since the last post. So after starting therapy, things seem to be getting better for a bit. My wife was more open and honest during our sessions, and I felt like we were making progress. But then, about two weeks ago, I noticed she was acting distant again. She was spending more time on her phone and less time with our daughter and me. I tried to brush it off, thinking maybe it was just work stress or something, but deep down I knew something was off. One night I decided to check her phone while she was in the shower. I know it's not the best thing to do, but I needed to know if my suspicions were right. I found messages between her and another coworker, not the same guy from before, but someone new. They were talking about meeting up and how much they missed each other. My heart sank. I confronted her as soon as she got out of the shower. She tried to deny it at first, but when I showed her the messages, she broke down and admitted everything. She said they had been talking for a few months and that it started as just friendly conversations. 
But then it turned into something more. They had met up a few times, but she swore they hadn't done anything physical. She said she was just looking for someone to talk to because she felt like I wasn't there for her emotionally. I was furious and hurt. I told her I couldn't keep doing this and that I needed some time to think. I decided to stay at a friend's house for a few days to clear my head. During that time, I thought a lot about our relationship and what I wanted. I realized that I couldn't keep living like this, constantly wondering if she was being honest with me. I decided that I needed to focus on myself and our daughter. When I got back home, I told her that I wanted a separation. She was devastated and begged me to reconsider, but I stood my ground. We agreed to take turns staying at the house with our daughter so she wouldn't have to deal with too much change all at once. It's been tough, but I think it's the best thing for now. I've been focusing on spending quality time with our daughter and trying to be the best dad I can be. It's been hard adjusting to this new reality, but I know it's the right thing to do. A few days ago, I got a call from my wife's sister. She told me that my wife had been struggling with depression for a while and that she had been trying to get help but didn't know how to talk to me about it. She said that my wife felt like she was failing as a wife and mother and that she was turning to other people for support because she didn't want to burden me. Hearing this broke my heart. I knew she was struggling, but I didn't realize how bad it was. I decided to reach out to my wife and talk to her about everything. We had a long, emotional conversation about our feelings and what we both needed. She admitted that she'd been feeling lost and didn't know how to ask for help. I told her that I was willing to support her and help her through this, but that we needed to work on our trust issues and communication. We've decided to continue therapy, both individually and together, to work on our issues. It's gonna be a long road, but I'm hopeful that we can get through this and come out stronger on the other side. I've also been trying to be more present and supportive, making sure she knows that she can talk to me about anything. In the meantime, I've been reflecting on my own actions and how I can be a better partner. I realized that I wasn't always there for her emotionally and that I need to work on being more understanding and supportive. It's not going to be easy, but I'm committed to making the necessary changes. As for our daughter, she's been handling everything surprisingly well. She's a resilient little girl, and I'm so proud of her. We've been trying to keep things as normal as possible for her, and she seems to be adjusting to the new routine. I've been making an effort to spend more one-on-one -on -one time with her, and it's been really rewarding. There's still a lot of uncertainty about the future, but I'm trying to take things one day at a time. I know that rebuilding trust and repairing our relationship is going to take time and effort from both of us. But I'm hopeful that with therapy and open communication, we can get through this. I also wanted to share a bit more about my wife's past, which I think has played a role in all of this. She grew up in a household where her parents were constantly fighting and eventually divorced. She's always been afraid of repeating their mistakes and has a hard time trusting people. I think this has contributed to her turning to others for support instead of coming to me. Understanding this has helped me be more empathetic and patient with her. So that's where we are now. It's been a challenging month, but I'm hopeful that we're on the right path. Thanks for reading. If you like this video, you'll probably like these too. Also, while you're here, please consider subscribing. It's your support that keeps this channel alive and allows me to make better and longer videos. Have a great day.